This video will cover the target related to Dalton's atomic theory, so understanding the theory, um, and then also being able to explain what has changed about his theory over time. So the history of the atom really starts us with John Dalton. Uh, he proposed that there was an atom in 1807. John Dalton is really interesting. He was not a scientist. He was a school teacher and a bookbinder um, and an avid reader. So as a bookbinder, he read everything that was being published at the time. So he read a lot of scientific research that was coming out um, and essentially tried to take all that research and combine it into one concept. So he took a lot of different information and put it into one theory, the idea that the whole of life is created from atoms. So Dalton's atomic theory is uh, made up of a couple different points. Uh, first point is that he proposed that all matter was actually made up of atoms. So this was the first time we brought back that term atoms. He also proposed that all atoms of any given element are unique in their physical and chemical properties. He said that when elements come together and combine, they always combine in simple whole number ratios. And then he said during a chemical reaction, no mass uh, can be lost or gained. So essentially, if you look at this, he proposed that there were atoms. He proposed that all atoms were unique. Uh, what that meant was that, uh, say you found copper in, you know, some old um, pyramid and you found copper bonded to something, uh, well, they look very different. Copper as pure atomic copper is that beautiful copper color you're used to. Copper bonded sometimes is blue. Um, but what he was saying was that that copper, no matter where it is, has a set of unique physical and chemical properties that will be different from oxygen or hydrogen or nitrogen. Okay, it has its own unique set. So every atom is different uh, from each other. Then the idea that they combine a whole number of ratios, this really goes back to that indestructible atom idea um, that if you're going to have hydrogen and oxygen bonded, uh, they have to have whole atoms of hydrogen and whole atoms of oxygen. So they're going to be like a two to one or a four to one um, whole number ratios, whole atoms being bonded. Then, of course, this last part, he read the conservation of mass that had been uh, pr produced at this time and said that during a chemical reaction no mass can be lost or gained, meaning that matter exists no matter what. Now of these, two of them are starred, the first two, and that's because our understanding of the atom has changed slightly since his um, proposal. Okay? The first one, all matter is made up of indestructible atoms. We know that's now not true. Matter can be destroyed. It can be destroyed in an atomic nature. Right, um, So any kind of splitting of the atom would go against his first postulate. So atoms exist, but they are not instructable. Then the second one of every atom having a set of unique, chemi unique chemical and physical properties, we now know is not 100% true because isotopes. So majority of carbon atoms are all the same, but if you look at carbon-12 versus carbon-13, they have different radioactive properties. Um, so the set that are unique and um, the same are really for the most abundant isotope, but then when we look at other isotopes, those properties are going to vary. It is true that all things combine in simple whole number ratios and the conservation of mass exists still. From Dalton's atomic theory then, the model he proposed is just this solid sphere model. So atoms cannot be split. There are no subatomic particles, but there is some defined thing that is the atom. So those are uh, Dalton's atomic theory. Have a nice night.